Welcome to Performance Upgrades. I'm your host, Dave Moss. Today's show is brought to you by sportbikewrench.com. Performance parts, professional advice. Today's show is all about setting sag on a 2009 R6. First thing we're going to do is measure the back of the motorcycle. In order to do that accurately, we're going to enlist the help of the very world famous Mr. Dave Williams, super interviewer. So I'm going to come around the front of the bike. We are going to measure from two fixed points. I'm going to use the center of the axle to the edge of this piece of plastic here. That measurement will give us And I use millimeters because it's much more accurate. 589 millimeters. So that's our first distance. Now what we have to do is check for what's called free sag, which is where the bike is sitting down, but it's not fully topped out. So Mr. Williams, please pull the back of the bike up, but not into the air to top it out for me. Our total distance in addition there is another eight. So we are at 96. So that gives us 596 millimeters for the bike to be topped out. And it's really important you do that. Please jump on. So in the blue corner, weighing in at 170 pounds, let him settle on the bike, push the back of the bike down, let it settle out properly. And we are at 565. So we have right now, with Dave in basically civilian clothes, 31 millimeters of sag. For the street you want, anywhere from 30 to 35 millimeters is what is accepted as something, as a good starting point to do. Dave is still on the bike, let's go ahead and move on to the front forks. Rider has to be in a normal riding position, which he is. Grab both handlebars, pull down, let the bike settle again. I'm going to measure from the joints of the dust seal in the gold tube to the axle casting. We're looking at a distance of 89 millimeters with the rider on. Okay, go ahead, jump off Dave. Now. Dave's going to grab both handlebars, I'm going to assist him, and we're going to pull this all the way up to 120 millimeters. So his physical sag, go ahead, let it go, is 31 millimeters. So if you're looking for a ballpark in the front, what we're trying to get to is at least 35 to 40 millimeters. So given the OEM settings that come off the showroom floor, the front end right now is too stiff, so we need to adjust it. Now, given Dave's weight, we know the forks are too stiff. Knowing the spike, what I'm going to do is remove all the preload. So, let's go ahead and do that on both fork legs. Now, when you remove all the preload, you want to turn it back in just a little bit. Okay, go ahead, Damon, sit back on the bike. Wait till your ride is comfortably seated, correctly seated. Pull down on the front forks again. So now we are looking at 37 millimeters a sec. So we want 35 to 40. All that does is get the bike in the ballpark to his body weight. Now we are very lucky with Dave's weight in that we did not need to go ahead and change the tension on the rear shock spring. On this bike on the 09R6, it's a ramp adjuster. So if your body weight requires you to make an adjustment, there are two ways to do that. Yamaha is generous in making sure that you have the appropriate tool in the toolkit. So let's have a close up and show which way 
and how you use the tool to change the setting. Now if the sag measurement is too great, then we need to change the setting on the ramp adjuster. Then you take the tool provided with the extension bar and you will turn the preload adjuster to the required ramp setting. Now every time you make a change, you want to sit the rider back on the bike and re-measure. That way you can evaluate if you arrived at the correct point for sag setting on the rear shock. If you are in fact too heavy and you need to increase the preload, then we need to flip the tool over and come from the back of the shock. And then we can increase preload and make the spring stiffer. Now in order to make this completely accurate, you need to be in full gear because that weighs on average somewhere around an extra 15 pounds. The other important aspect of measuring sag is to make sure that the bike and the suspension in particular is thoroughly hot. So if you go for a ride, take a friend with you, and if you want to get it precise, that's what it's going to take. Now on to the next part of setting the bike up. Setting sag isn't just spring tension. We've, we were fortunate in that the spring setting on the preload adjuster is correct for day's weight. Once you set spring tension, now you have to manage hydraulic damping, the first being rebound damping. So once you set the spring tension, that will determine the amount of energy that is released. So what we need to do is basically push on the bike to make sure that the return stroke, the rebound stroke, is at one speed and nice and smooth. The bike needs to be in a sport shock as we have it here, or a friend holding the handlebars so the bike stays still. Your shoulders should be completely over the center line of the seat. You need to push down with as much force as you can, but then you need to let the bike return upwards and you cannot interfere with that upward motion. We're looking for one smooth, quick return straight up to the top of the stroke and that's it. And from what we can see, the rear shock with its current rebound setting works quite well. All right, now onto the front of the bike and checking the rebound setting in the forks. Obviously, we've got to pull the bike out of the chuck. You're going to balance the bike against your hip so it should be able to rest against you nice and comfortably. Grab at both handlebars, hold the front brake firmly on, and then you're going to push down on the front forks. Again, you have to let the fork come back. The front fork rebound action should be identical to the rear shock. To start this, I'm going to lift the bike up first. And we can see the front fork simply go down to the bottom and come straight back to the top of the stroke, no problems at all. So the rebound setting we have, that's OEM, is excellent given the preload we have in the front fork right now. Setting rebound is incredibly important because when the bike hits a bump, the forks and the shock need to respond to that bump in exactly the same way. Otherwise, the bike gets what we call a pogo. So, you can see that the bike rises and falls perfectly evenly right now. So what we've done is check our rebound settings on the shock and the fork based on our preload spring settings. The bike seems to work very well with the OEM settings that it came with on the showroom floor. However, the oil is really cold. So in order to get this perfect, exactly the same as in measuring sag, you need to ride the bike and get the forks and the shock thoroughly hot and then check your rebound settings again. Now our 2009 R6 on compression has high and low speed damping for the forks and the shock. Now the OEM settings provide a pretty plush ride for the street and so we're not going to change those because obviously the street is a very rough, unpredictable surface. If we were to take the bike to the track however, then we would need to start working with high and low speed compression 
because the braking, cornering and other aspects of track riding are much more aggressive.